And hello everybody, welcome to the John M. Reeves Student Recreation Center here on the campus of Centenary College in Hackettstown, New Jersey for our men's basketball game tonight which features the defenders of Baptist Bible College and our very own Cyclones of Centenary College. I'm your play-by-play -play man for the evening, Daniel Graham, and right now they are introducing Centenary's starting lineups. They had just mentioned Baptist Bible starting lineups uh, just a few moments ago, but starting for our very own Cyclones is number four, Jovan Bausiger, number 12, Kyle Malavesi, number 13, Alex Bernhard, number 30, Josh Case, and number 31, Tim Bricks. On the other end of the court for the defenders, it's number three, Abe Valentine, number five, Dan Decker, number 10, Dan McGuigan, number 22, Jordan Grieve, and number 23, Luke Peterson. So right now, we are about to get ready for tip-off. Right uh, at this moment, Baptist Bible is 5-8 and eight overall, 2-4 and four in conference play. Centenary is 2-13 and 1-7 and and in conference play. And right now, they're riding an 8-game losing streak that they hope they can end tonight. This is a non-conference game, so they're playing um, without conference, uh, inter-conference, I suppose. So we are getting ready for tip-off. Uh, everyone's getting on the court. And by the way, everybody, ha happy Martin Luther King Day for those of you who know or already don't know. So Josh Case for Centenary and Luke Peterson will be taking the tip off and Centenary wins it. So coming up the court with it for Centenary, Alex Bernhard. He'll give it on over to Malavesi and to Bowser at the top of the key. And a little pass action going on, trying to get in the paint. Bowser thought about taking a shot but thought against it, but driving in Josh Case. It was tipped by Baptist Bible, so it will stay Centenary ball. So Bowsager will be inbounding the ball for Centenary, trying to find someone. He'll find Malavesi at the top of the key. And he gives it to Bernhard, back to Malavesi. And some pass ball going on. Bowsager gets it back, looking for someone down low, but he stays outside the perimeter. Bernhard took a three, missed it. And now coming up to court for Baptist Bible, Dan Decker. Looking for a pick, he won't get it. Instead, he'll give it to Luke Peterson, who gives it to Dan McGuigan. And once again, some more pass ball. Looking to drive in the paint. Going around with it. I don't think they've taken any foot over the perimeter yet. They're really taking their time with finding a shot. But taking a shot from Baptist Bible, Jordan Grieve misses it. So coming up is Bowsager for Centenary. So we're about a minute 15 into this game. No score just yet. Centenary looking to change that. So Case gets the ball down low. He'll dish out to Malavesi for three. Goes off. Rebounded. Baptist Bible. Number 22, Jordan Griff. And he gives it to number five, Dan Decker. But the ball went out of bounds. So Centenary will begin the ball right back. So Centenary is led by head coach Tim Fasina. This is his first season with Centenary College. A graduate of California, Pennsylvania, class of 2007. His assistant coaches, Sean Stoltzenthaler and Zach Luke. And Josh Case will take a shot in the paint, goes off. A lot of missed shots here in the beginning of the game, and that's why it's a nothing-nothing score so far, as we had two minutes into this game. Luke Peterson for the three for Baptist Bible, another miss. Centenary rebounds the ball. So plenty of possession changes here. No points, no assists. I don't think any steals yet, but pretty soon somebody will get on the board and will make this game interesting. But a traveling called on Kyle Malavesi. So that halts any centenary points for right now. Baptist Bible trying to get into this before centenary does. So right now it's a struggle for drawing first blood, but Centenary will take their first timeout, a 30-second timeout called by Tim Fasima. And the head coach for the defenders of Baptist Bible, Mike Show, 
This is his unprecedented 20th season with Baptist Bible. Uh, he is an alumnus of Baptist Bible class of 92, and his three assistant coaches are Joel Neitz, Dwight Peterson, and Wesley Upperman. So Mike Schell obviously has a lot of school pride to be at the same college that he graduated from from 20 years ago. So as we resume play, uh, the defenders will be getting the ball. Luke Peterson inbounding it to Dan McWeegan. And down low, Jordan Grieve gets a foul and one. So finally, somebody gets on the board, and that's the defenders. So Jordan Grieve going to the line to attempt an and one and make this a 3 nothing score two and a half minutes into the game. So a shot goes up and sinks right in. So a 3-0 lead by the defenders, the first score of the game, courtesy of Jordan Griff. So sitting there trying to answer right back, whether it will be a 3 to even it or a 2 just to get on the board. Anything's acceptable at this point, but Malavesi driving in, looking for the 2. He gets it. So just like that, after 2.5 minutes of scoreless play, both teams finally get on the board, and only one point separates them, and the defenders have the lead. But a three ball by Jordan Griff goes off, rebounded by Bowsager for Centenary. And he gives it on over to Bernhard, and then back to Bernhard. Bernhard took a three, missed it, but Baptist Bible will get the rebound. Luke Peterson coming up with it. A quick pass to A. Valentine. He's going to try to drive in, and nice adjustment on his part to get the two, so 5-2 now, Baptist Bible. So, Bowsager passing it on over to Bernhard. And going down low again is Case. He's trying to get it to Bricks, but instead he'll pass it back out to the top of the perimeter. And more pass ball going on. Bowsager has the open three, might as well take it. But off the rim and back into the hands of the defenders. A Valentine has the ball, he'll give it to Luke Peterson, trying to drive in with it, it just almost fell, but was able to pass the ball in time before being called for a travel. But Dan Decker attempting a three, goes off, goes out of bounds, so Centenary will keep the ball. And we have our first substitutions of the game coming in for Baptist Bible, number 30, Adam Brinkley and number 33 Dan Dodd as Abe Valentine and Jordan Griff go to the bench to take a breather. So both teams trying to find their flow, offensive flow at least. Uh, right now both of their defenses are unprecedented probably for the most part because no one's really making a lot of shots. Field goal percentage is pretty low right now. But the defense is stepping up though as we see right there for Baptist Bible a steal by Dan Dodd. And driving in with it, Dan McGuigan goes around the net, wraps around and tries to pass it back out, but stolen by Josh Case for Centenary. And he'll outlet it to Bernhardt. Right now, Tim Bricks has it, takes a jumper, rims out, and back in the hands of the defenders. So Luke Peterson coming up, a charge. But it looks like a foul called on Tim Bricks. A blocking called on Tim Bricks. So Baptist Bible will retain possession. And we have some more substitutions. Our first for Centenary. But coming in for Baptist Bible, Abe Valentine for Dan McGuigan and Kyle Smith for Bernhard. And a jumper by Dan Decker goes over the rim, an air ball. But coming down with it, Malavesi passes to Bowsager. Bowsager looking for Bricks down low. All ball right there. Nice block by Dan Dodd. Even from up here, I could tell that was all ball. No dirty play there. Driving in a Valentine. Another block. Josh Case this time. All ball again. So Kyle Smith coming up with it. Kyle Smith is a 5'9 freshman from Warwick, New York. Went to Burke Catholic High School. A lot of freshmen have been, have been playing for the most part for Centenary this year. 
Uh, we also know that Zach Dumich, another freshman, a 6'2 freshman, uh, also gets some uh, even playing time as opposed to the uh, upperclassmen and the juniors. But of course, Tim Ficina is a first-year coach, so he does want to look at all the talent he has available, especially he has to look for the future for him being a first-year head coach. But attempting a three there, Dan Decker misses it, goes out of bounds, centenary ball. So 14.03 remaining. It's only 5-2 to two in favor of Baptist Bible. So plenty of defense here, steals, blocks, you name it. And offense has yet to catch up with the uh, great defensive play here. And it looks like waiting in the wings will have two more substitutions for Baptist Bible. So both coaches really making the most out of their bench opportunity and going up and around was Josh Case, an easy two for Centenary right there. So 5-4 now. And driving in for Baptist Bible was number 23, Luke Peterson. Last touch by Centenary as the ball went out of bounds. Now we have substitutions. Paul Jones coming in for Josh Case for Centenary and back in for Baptist Bible. Number 22, Jordan Griff, and number 30, Adam Brinkley. And Dan Dodd driving in. He gets the easy two for Baptist Bible. Seven to four now. So Kyle Smith coming up with it. Looking for somebody. He gets Malavasi back to Smith. Playing the perimeter again. Bowsager, Smith, and Malavasi. Paul Jones draws the foul. And we'll see who that's on. 33, Dan Dodd. So Paul Jones will be going to the line to shoot two. So here we go, Centenary's first trip to the foul line tonight. Paul Jones attempting two, here is his first. Off the back of the rim. And the only one down there is Bowsager. If Paul Jones misses his second, uh, it's only him and Bowsager who could get the rebound for Centenary. And rims out again for Centenary. So lack of shooting, lack of uh, free throws right now where we've only had three free throws tonight but a charging call on a Valentine an offensive foul and way to plant his feet number 12 Kyle Malavasi so that's Baptist Bible second team foul and with the team foul Centenary and Baptist Bible are even with two so here's Kyle Smith looking for somebody he gives it to Malavasi and I mentioned him before he's about to come in now when a stoppage of play is available, Zach Dumich, the freshman, the 6'2 freshman from Millstown Township, New Jersey. Malavasi takes a shot, rims out. Looks like we have a foul called. A pushing call on Abe Valentine. So here we go. We got centenary subs and a sub for Baptist Bible as well. Number 23, Luke Peterson, comes in for the defenders. Josh Case comes back in along with Zach Dumich, and this is Dumich's first time out on the court. And he'll be getting the inbounds pass. He'll give it to Josh Case, to Kyle Smith, to Dumich, playing the perimeter again. Bowser looking for someone in the paint. He drives in, gives it back to Dumich at the top, trying to get it down low apparently, but Kyle Smith and Dumich will exchange the ball for a little bit. Kyle Smith will take the three rims out, rebounded by Paul Jones for Centenary. He drives in, doesn't get it, but a little tip ball, and Baptist Bible ends up with it. So Baptist Bible, a chance to get ahead by two possessions. And here we go, three ball by Dan McGuigan, misses it. Rebounded by Dan McGuigan, gets the shot, but draws the foul. Paul Jones gets called for the foul. So that was Paul Jones' first personal foul, the team's third. So here's McGuigan attempting two for the, the defenders. McGuigan's first shot off the front of the rim, and we have Dan Decker making his reappearance for the defenders. Coming out for him, Adam Brinkley. So Dan McGuigan will attempt a second, missed his first. His second rims out again. So Centenary still down by a possession, thankfully. Josh Case there with the rebound for the Cyclones. Kyle Smith will give it to Dumich. And Bowser has the ball. 
He tries to get it down low to Paul Jones. Stolen by Dan McGuigan. He's driving down the court. One on three, but he'll pass it to Luke Peterson. Mishandle of the ball by Jordan Grev. Gets it back to Centenary. Josh Case there with the steal. So Kyle Smith once again coming up with the ball. Bowsager now has it. Back to Smith, and Dumich gets it. Looking for Case down low. Case trying to drive his way in, but the pass taken away by number 23, Luke Peterson for the defenders. Then out Valentine trying to get in, but Grev gets it instead. McGuigan to Grev, and Grev will attempt a three. Another miss. So both teams benefiting by offenses missing their shots here. No one's found their flow yet, but Josh Case might have gotten the flow right there. He gets the easy two to fall, so it's only one point that separates these two. So Tim Ficino will call a full timeout. So now that we have some free time, I'd just like to say a few words from our fellow colleges playing tonight. Whether you're a high school student looking for a college that provides hands-on learning instead of lecture halls, or a community college student hoping to finish your degree at a small private college that offers individual attention, Centenary College always treats you like a person and never a number. Centenary offers a strong career development center, amazing internships, NCAA D3 sports, and many leadership opportunities all within a diverse, welcoming atmosphere on a beautiful campus. Or maybe you're a working adult looking to advance your career. Centenary offers convenient one night per week and online bachelor's and master's degree programs in Hackestown, Edison, and Parsippany, New Jersey that can help you be promoted, earn a higher salary, and take on more interesting work. To learn more, visit centenarycollege.edu. Discover Centenary College, where your dream career may be just a dream degree away. So we are joined back here. John and Reeves Center in Hackettstown. Tim Fasina had just called a uh, full timeout. And it's only a 7 to 6 lead for the defenders. But Centenary looking to close in and take the lead here. So we'll resume play. Baptist Bible will be inbounding the ball. They'll try to add on to the lead. So A. Valentine has it for Baptist Bible. He gives it to Grev. Valentine trying to drive in with it. Baseline passes it out to Luke Peterson. Peterson has it. But he gives it down low to Jordan Grev, who will dish it out to Dan Decker, who attempts a three. Another missed three. I don't think there's been a three this whole game yet. But Centenary coming down with it, trying to take the lead. So Kyle Smith has it at the, at the top. Looking for somebody here. He gives it to Dumich. And Dumich looking to drive in, but Kyle Smith will get the ball. He fakes a three, passes it back to Dumich. And looking down low for someone, but instead he'll give it to Kyle Smith. Kyle Smith trying to weave his way into the paint, but he dishes it out to Bowsager at the top of the perimeter. Five seconds on the shot clock. Kyle Smith has no choice but to take the three, and he gets the three. So great job by Centenary's offense there. And they will manage the shot clock as well. So they take their first lead of the game. It's 9-7, courtesy of the three by Kyle Smith. So here we go. Abe Valentine trying to answer with a three of his own, but he misses and rebounded by Paul Jones. And a down low pass. Smith trying to get it down to Bowsager, but it was stolen by Luke Peterson for the defenders. And he's trying to find someone, Dan McGuigan. He finds Jordan Grief. And Abe Valentine, another drive, but they call him for the travel. So Centenary gets the ball right back. Jovan Bowsager will be inbounding the ball to Kyle Smith. Kyle Smith once again looks like he's the play caller right now, the general on the court for right now for the Cyclones. Then he'll find Bowsager, and they'll swing it out. Do Mitch ends up with it, trying to find someone down low, but he'll give it back to Smith. Tried to get a pass down low as Do Mitch, but it was blocked, but bounced out of bounds. So Cincinnati will retain possession. And Adam Brinkley will be subbing in for Jordan Grieve for the defenders. So Dumich once again inbounding the ball. He'll find Case. Case up behind the perimeter. Uh, this is a very unusual place for Case to be, especially a man as high and a man his position on this team. Case driving in, airs it. But a jump ball, a last touch by Baptist Bible. 
and Mike Schell can't believe it. He he swears that Centenary touched it last. And as we all know, if you all follow sports, usually when a coach or player pleads their case, it's for the most part overruled. And Bowsinger attempted a three there, rebounded by Dumich, but a pushing called on Baptist Bible. Dan McGuigan getting called for that. So that's the defender's fourth team foul compared to Centenary's three. So here we go, Bowsinger passes it to Dumich, back to Bowsinger. Wide open is Dumich, so he's going to take the three. He might as well misses it, but a little scramble there, but picked up by Dan McGuigan for Baptist Bible. He'll outlet it to Valentine. He'll try to drive in, but instead he'll give it to Luke Peterson. Gets the three to fall. Ten to nine, Baptist Bible now. And looks like Tim Bricks will be making his reappearance to the court who he'll be subbing in for. We'll see in just a few moments when we get a stoppage in play. And looks like another person is making their debut for the first time this game. And that is none other than number three, Clayton Roker. Josh Case misses the shot. Dumich tries to get the rebound, but last touch by him. So Baptist Bible will get it back. And we will see Clayton Roker and Tim Bricks coming in. Kyle Smith and Josh Case will be stepping out. So 8.22 remaining in the first half here at the John M. Reeves Student Recreation Center at Centenary College. Baptist Bible on the road here trying to improve their record to six and eight. Centenary trying to get out of a hole that they've dug themselves in. They have an eight game losing streak so far um, against some stiff competition in their conference and a few opponents out of conference, most notably Mount St. Mary. It was a very powerful team, but thankfully not in Centenary's conference. But Paul Jones right there draws the foul and we'll see who it's on and it looks like number three for Baptist Bible a Valentine so that's his second personal foul and now Baptist Bible has racked up five team fouls and Paul Jones will be going to shoot two from the line Paul Jones gets the first to fall and we got a substitution for Baptist Bible. Jordan Grieve coming back in. Number 30, Adam Brinkley, will be coming out. Paul Jones, his second shot coming up, trying to take the lead for Centenary. Rims out and rebounded by Baptist Bible. Therefore, it was Jordan Grieve, number 22. A Valentine has it for the defenders. And playing around the perimeter, trying to drive in. Dan Decker has the ball. He's at the top of the perimeter and not a lot of uh, encouragement from either side to try to drive in the paint and get points that way. They're really taking their time with these. Dan Decker crosses up Dumich and gets the three to fall. So 13 to 10 defenders and it looks like the defenders have a cheering section of their own who came all the way here. A centenary looks like. It's a place almost erupted when Decker made that three, but to silence them, Tim Bricks gets the two to fall in the paint. So 13 to 12 now in favor of Baptist Bible. Dan Decker driving in, almost gets it to fall, but no foul called there. Looked pretty close to one, but the refs held their whistle on that. And trying to take the shot there was Clayton Roker, but he couldn't adjust enough to get it on rim. And driving down with it, Baptist Bible, Luke Peterson draws the foul on Paul Jones. Excuse me, that was Bowsinger who got called for the foul, not Paul Jones. So Centenary fourth team foul, as opposed to Baptist Bible's fifth. And at the line, Luke Peterson shooting two. His first shot goes right in. It looks like Malavesi will be making a reappearance for the Cyclones. Peterson makes both shots, 14 to 12. Malavesi will be coming in for Bowsinger. So here we go, Paul Jones with the inbounds pass. Clayton Roker coming up with it, trying to get closer to a tie or tie the game itself here, it's their choice. It's only 15 to 12 Baptist Bible. Dumich getting it down low to Paul Jones, but he'll dish it out to Clayton Roker. He'll try to drive in, but he dishes it to Malavesi. Malavesi tries to drive in and gets the adjustment to fall. So 15 to 14 Baptist Bible. There's a lot of small balls being played right now. 
a three here and there, but for the most part, shots in the paint and foul shots. And Peterson getting the two to fall for the defenders. So the defenders are not going to go away quietly and let Centenary tie this game or retake the lead. As they are holding a very firm three-point lead whenever Centenary seems to draw it within one, they answer right back. So Malavesi gives it to Roker, then back to Malavesi. Now Roker gets the ball back. Clayton Roker will take the J. He gets it to fall. So once again, Centenary draws within one. Now it's just a matter of their defense stepping up, but a reaching called on Clayton Roker. So that's his first team, uh, personal foul. But subbing in, we got more substitutions for the defenders and the Cyclones. Number 33, Dan Dodd coming in for Centenary. And Josh Case coming back on the court for Centenary. Dan Decker has the ball from the inbounds pass and tries to set up the pick there. Luke Peterson attempts the three, gets it to fall. So the defenders open up a four point lead. So the defenders are really keeping Centenary at bay with any threats of Centenary tying or taking the lead in this game. Centenary briefly had the lead before, but the defenders took it right back and they have not relinquished it since. So Tim Bricks takes the J off the front of the rim, rebounded by Baptist Bible Dan Dodd, number 33. Dan Decker with the pass. He gives it to Jordan Grieve, and he draws the foul. Dumich getting called for that one. And that was as big of a foul as you could, you could get without it being a technical. And now Centenary's fan group is trying to get involved with this game. So here we go, the foul shot by Jordan Grieve. Gets it to go. So returning to the court for the Cyclones, number 13, Andrew Bernhard. I'm sorry, Alex Bernhard, and number 5, Tyler Harris. This is Harris's first appearance in this game. So 11 team fouls combined for both teams. Six on Centenary's part, five for Baptist Bible. Clayton Roker has the ball, he'll give it to Bernhardt, Bernhardt gives it back to Roker, almost lost it there was Roker, but he recovers, Bernhardt has it back, Roker has it, he'll give it back to Bernhardt, Bernhardt looking for Malavesi, Malavesi trying to set up something here, looks like they want to give it the case down low, Tyler Harris to Bernhardt, back to Harris, and now Roker, Roker will take the shot to beat the clock, and he gets it, 21 to 19. Now, Centenary looks like they're getting their offensive flow going. But attempting a three there was a Valentine. He misses it. Centenary has an opportunity to tie this game. Roker gives it to Bernhard, and Roker will get the ball right back. Malavesi looking to set up something. So Bernhard will take the three for the lead. Gets it to sink. So 22-21 Centenary. Now Centenary gets the lead back. It's only the second time in this game that they were able to get it. Abe Valentine has it for the defenders. So we've got an interesting first half here, taking the J for the defenders. Was number 33, Dan Dodd, but coming down with it. Josh Case gets the and one to go. So now we're seeing the Cyclones come out in full swing, finally. And what a great time to do it. Winding down here in the first half, Centenary for the most part was modest at best with their offense production. And now they've turned the Jets on. Uh, I believe Baptist Bible was down, by, was up by as much as five. But Centenary just came roaring back and now they have a three point lead of their own. So, looks like we got a timeout here. Everyone looks to compose themselves here. But I wouldn't expect Centenary to try to compose themselves. They are on fire right now. Back to back threes. And that's why they have a 24-21 lead here in the first half with three minutes and 44 seconds remaining. So, it looks like Mike Schell for the defenders trying to put a strategy in place to keep Centenary from scoring any more and increasing their lead by the end of this half. Mike Show 
It's unbelievable. He's been at this college for 20 years now. This is his 20th season. And um, like we mentioned before, looks like a lot of uh, attachment to the school, a lot of pride and a lot of loyalty on his part. And that's commendable in my book. So we'll resume play here. When we left before the timeout, Josh Keynes was about to take his M1 shot to increase Centenary's lead to four. And he'll have a chance to do it now. And once again, the only one down there is Tyler Harris to get Josh Case's shot if he doesn't make it. And he doesn't make it. And Baptist Bible will get it right back. Jordan Grieve gets to rebound. And now Dan McGuigan coming up the court with it. And he'll give it to Grieve down low. But Dan Decker gets the pass. And more pass ball for the defenders. And Grieve trying to drive in. Misses it. Malavesi with the rebound. Malavesi pushing his way up the court. Clayton Roker has the ball. Malavesi thought about a three, thought against it. Bernhard down to Harris, back to the top of the key. Malavesi looking to set up something again. Centenary. Josh Case has the ball down low, but he dishes it to Malavesi. Malavesi might as well attempt a three, gets it to go. So it looks like Centenary's not done with the high scoring. They open up their lead to six, 27 to 21. So here's your two and 13. Centenary has a six point lead. So the defenders trying to get back into this game. Dan Decker gets the inbounds pass. Looks like the defenders looking for anything at this point, but attempting the three there was Jordan Grieve misses it. Centenary has another opportunity to increase their lead. Clayton Roker coming up the court with it. Looks like he'll give it to Malavesi, and he will. And he's... And, and here's Malavesi for the three, another three! This is unbelievable. That's Malavesi's second three in a row. They're fourth in probably the last two minutes. And they're really spreading the wealth around right now. Almost everyone getting in on the three action for Centenary. We had Clayton Roker coming in before. Ooh, a foul called right there for Centenary. So Josh Case getting called for the foul there. Abe Valentine will try to stop the bleeding for the defenders right now. He'll try to close in on Centenary's nine-point lead. His first shot will rattle its way in. So 2.09 remaining here in the first half. Abe Valentine will be attempting his second shot. And it looks like Tim Fasima trying to work his magic on the head official here. Make sure everything's in order. But... A Valentine makes the second, so it's a seven-point lead now for Centenary, 30 to 23. So Clayton Roker trying to devise a play here. Tyler Harris gives it to Case. Malavesi has it. He'll dish it to Roker. Roker takes a second, but he'll pass it to Malavesi anyway. So here we go. Josh Case driving in. Oh, almost stolen there by Baptist Bible, but driving in with it, Bernhard gets it to fall in. So Centenary back up by nine. A minute 30 remaining here in the first half. Now a minute 30. Getting ahead of myself. Baptist Bible trying to find any scoring opportunities they can. They want to close this gap as much as they can before the half ends. Try to get up momentum going, but a foul called on Tyler Harris as A. Valentine tried to drive in. A push called. So, Centenary will rack up their eighth team foul. The defenders have six team fouls. So, plenty of foul action here in the first half as well. 14 team fouls combined. A. Valentine will take his first. It goes in. So, he's attempting a one and one. So, very good effort on his part to get the first shot down. So you get, they get an opportunity to get the second. Abe Valentine sinks both of them. So a good way to take advantage of the one-on-one, -on -one, making sure he gets both attempts there. So Centenary holds a seven-point lead. They are leading by a touchdown. And Josh Case trying to drive in. Lost control of the ball for a second, but he gets foul called anyway. 
So foul called on Baptist Bible number 22, Jordan Grief. So that's his first personal foul. That's the seventh team for the defenders. Josh Case will be going to shoot two at the line. Gets the first to go. Excuse me, he was attempting a one-on-one -on -one himself, but he gets the first shot to fall anyway, so he will be getting two out of this. Minute seven remaining here in the first half. Josh Case goes for a second. Rims out, unfortunately. Tyler Harris gets the rebound, but a jump ball, Baptist Bible's ball. So pretty unfortunate there for Centenary. Tyler Harris did get the rebound off the foul shot, but a jump ball was called, and Baptist Bible will get the ball right back. So it's only an eight-point lead for Centenary, 33-25. to But Centenary... Oh, Val a Valentine knocking over Roker, but apparently there wasn't enough there to call a charge. And Malavesi will get the ball. Looks like a Valentine misses shot. Centenary gets the ball right back. An opportunity to get up by 10 or 11 here for Centenary. Malavesi giving it to Tyler Harris. Way to thread that needle. But baseline Tyler Harris didn't get it, but Josh Case gets the rebound. 10 point lead for Centenary. 35 to 25 Cyclone. Shot clock is off. Baptist Bible looks to get the last possession here. Unprecedented offensive play here, I must say, for the Cyclones. So Baptist Bible just draining down that play, that game clock. We are down to eight. Oh, a travel called on Baptist Bible. Luke Peterson right there. He almost took that three before they called him. So Centenary has an opportunity to get one more shot off. And they better be careful. It's like Baptist Bible is hungry to keep Centenary away from shooting anything. Tyler Harris will attempt a three at the buzzer. Doesn't get it to go. But nonetheless, great offensive play on Centenary's part. Plenty of three action. We were lacking some threes at the beginning of the game, especially on Centenary's side of the court. But Centenary somehow got it going, started firing on all cylinders. Almost four three-pointers within a two-minute span. And I believe Baptist Bible was up by as much as five earlier in the game. But Centenary, who looked to be just clawing their way to, to at least tie the game, pulled a ten-point lead over the defenders. And this has been some great action so far. So as we leave you at the half, the score once again, Centenary 25, Baptist Bible, excuse me, Centenary 35, Baptist Bible 25. And this is your play-by-play -play man, Dan Graham, and we'll see you for the second half. So we'll see you in 14 minutes and 15 seconds. All right, everybody, welcome back for a second half coverage of our men's basketball game tonight here at the John M. Reeves Student Recreation Center at Centenary College in Hackettstown, New Jersey. Centenary holds a 10-point lead over Baptist Bible, a surprising 10-point lead. Uh, plenty of three action going on towards the end of the first half. We had a very sluggish beginning to our game. The first points weren't scored until about two and a half minutes in. And now it's unbelievable that both teams that combined to score 60 points, we were afraid that teams weren't even going to get close to 20 combined, or 30. But here we go, 60 points. And 10 points separates the Cyclones from the defenders. So here we go, starting for the second half. Pretty much the same crew as the first. Looks to be. I believe we are. So here we go, Bowsinger will be inbounding the ball for Centenary. They will have first possession. So Malavesi has the ball. He'll dish it out to Josh Case. And they're picking up just where they finished off in the first half. There are the first two points of the second half, courtesy of Josh Case for a centenary. So some of the points leaders here in the first half for a centenary 
with 10 points was Kyle Malavesi, and he had dropped two threes in the first half. And on the other side of the court, Luke Peterson has 10 points of his own. So they are the, the leaders right now for this game as far as total points are concerned. So going to the line to shoot two for Baptist Bible, number 23, Luke Peterson. And they're going to try to narrow this lead. So Luke Peterson gets the first to fall. So Luke Peterson will be going to attempt his second shot and it will go off the back of the rim. Centenary gets it. So Centenary holds an 11 point lead here. Tom Alavesi coming up the court and gives it to Josh Case. He'll give it back to Malavesi. Malavesi trying to catch the defense off balance here. But Bowsager has it and they're gonna do some swing action once again. Trying to find someone down low. He finds Tim Bricks, but Bricks gives it to Bowsager. Back to Bernhard. Bowsager to Malavesi. Malavesi with the three off the front of the rim. And A. Valentine and Josh Case got tangled up there when trying to get the rebound. They both fell. But Baptist Bible trying to narrow this lead back down to single digits. Luke Peterson will attempt a three to give them a spark, and he gets it to fall. 37 to 29, Centenary's lead now. So here we go, about 18.30 remaining here in the game. Bowsager comes up with it to Malavesi, and Malavesi gives it to Bernhard, and Bowsager gets the ball right back. Some pass ball at the moment. Centenary trying to set something up, but 15 seconds remains on the shot clock, so they might want to put the kibosh on the passing and going for the shot. Malavesi does just that. He missed the shot, but Tim Bricks gets the rebound for Centenary, gets it to fall. So back up again to double digits, 39-29 in favor of the Cyclones. And Dan McGuigan gets the three to fall. So now it's Baptist Bible's turn at making the threes here. And rightfully so, because Centenary was hogging all the threes in the first half. So, looks like Baptist Bible has a spark here, and they really don't want to rel relinquish that spark or extinguish it. Because they need seven more points to get back into this game. Centenary trying to carry on what they finished off in the first half. With the steady offense and the high scoring, Bowsager trying to get the three to go. He sinks it! So three balls all in the second half. Looks like it's going to be a shootout here in the second half, but I do not want to jinx anything of that kind. And I guess I didn't because Jordan Grieve gets the J to fall, 42 to 34 now. 17.05, about to be, remaining in the game. Malavesi looking up for it. Bernhard has it. And once again, some pass ball play in the perimeter, once again, Centenary. They just want to play with that shot clock a little doing a good job at it 12 seconds remains Bernhard took a three missed it a Valentine with the rebound for the defenders a Valentine going down and attempting a three Luke Peterson sent Baptist Bible just going off shooting bullets right now Baptist Bible here and plenty of offense here after a sluggish first half to the beginning and we got a 30 second timeout here for Centenary so unbelievable we thought we were going to see a low scoring match today. We thought wrong. Because everybody's hitting their mark today on both sides of the court. So, with this timeout, 1640 remaining in the second half. Centenary holds a five point lead, 42 to 37. And this is something else. So, Centenary will inbounds the ball. Bernhardt will have it. Bernhard will be inbound on the ball to Bowsager. So Bowsager will have it. And he'll pass it on over. Malavesi with the ball now. And he gives it to Bowsager. Hayden ball going out of bounds. It will go to Baptist Bible. So Baptist Bible has some momentum at the moment. They get the ball back, holding Centenary at bay. 
for the most part, just trying to plug up the leaks on the sinking ship. And for the most part, they've been doing a good job at it. Centenary looked to be carrying on what they were finishing off in the first half. But Baptist Bible, with the help of some threes, is getting them back into this game. It's unbelievable. So Bernhard thought about three, but Malavesi will get the pass from him instead. And Bausiger to Malavesi. Bricks, Bausiger, Bernhard. And as the pass ball continues to be a trend for the Cyclones here, just trying to get that shot clock down. They're really playing the shot clock, playing the clock itself. And possession, and Tim Bricks with the J gets the fall, just shy of a three, about full step away from a three there, but they'll take the two. Centenary 44 to 37, they hold the lead. A Valentine with Baptist Bible, passing it to Luke Peterson. Looking for it, Abe Valentine gets the ball right back, trying to get it down low to Brinkley, but Brinkley is being covered heavily by Josh Case. And attempting the three was Luke Peterson, misses it, Malavesi with the centenary rebound. And he's coming right back down the court with it. He'll give it to Bernhard, Bernhard. Had an opportunity to shoot three there, three there but he won't, but Malavesi will, gets it to fall. So the threes just coming at any given moment here. We thought we weren't going to see three at all in this game the first few minutes. But we got plenty of three ball going on, plenty of offense here. So Baptist Bible will be taking a timeout. So now that we have this time, I'd just like to give a little shout out to Baptist Bible College. BBC has provided excellence in biblical higher education for 80 years. Located in Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, BBC offers nearly 40 undergraduate majors. More than 1,000 students are enrolled in undergraduate, graduate, and seminary programs, which each offered on campus and online. Our scenic 131-acre campus, located in a suburban area near Scranton, Pennsylvania, now includes the brand new 5.6 million Recreation Athletic Center. This expansion of the Phelps Student Center includes an indoor track climbing tower, three basketball courts, a cardio room, a weight room, and more. Our faculty and staff serve as teachers and mentors for life, with graduates serving as global Christian leaders in a range of careers. BBC goes beyond the ordinary. Learn more at www.bbc.edu. Wow, that campus sounds so good, I might just transfer over. Just kidding. Just kidding. I have a steady work, study job here. I don't want to relinquish that. But, yeah, that $5.6 million athletic center that BBC put in does sound intriguing. Uh, climbing tower sounds good to me. But anyway, getting back to the game here at Centenary's state-of-the-art athletic center. A. Valentine driving in for Baptist Bible. A. Valentine trying to get down low, but he'll get the three opportunity for Dan McGuigan. Erzik and Malavesi coming up the court with it for Centenary after getting the rebound. And waiting for everyone to get into position. Josh Case making his way over to the right side of the court. Looks to be a little pick. Roker thought about taking the J, but couldn't get an open opportunity to. Malavesi looking around, looking for someone down low, but he'll drive in, take the J, but rebounded by Adam Brinkley for a Baptist Bible. A. Valentine driving in, looks to get an opportunity, but he'll miss the layup. But rebounding it was Adam Brinkley, misses the shot, but just draws the foul. Looks to be Clayton Roker. No, looks to be... Yeah, it was Clayton Roker. Now we got three substitutions for BBC now. Number 33, Dan Dodd. Number 11, Aaron Clark making his first appearance on the court tonight. And Jordan Grief. And Clayton Roker coming down the court with it. Almost behind the back. Oh, I wish he had finished that. That would have been great. But Centenary will, still has their 10-point lead. BBC trying to claw closer to this lead. The Centenary has opened up. Centenary has led by as much as 12 in this game. But taking the J for Baptist Bible was Luke Peterson. Had no luck there. But a foul is called. Dan Decker attempted a shot. 
Malavesi gets called for a foul. So that's St. Mary's third team foul. So far, Baptist Bible has been clean with team fouls. Nothing on the board just yet, but Dan Decker will take advantage of that third team foul St. Mary had on him. Courtesy of Kyle Malavesi, his first shot goes off. Looked to go in, but front of the rim and the back of the rim said no, thank you. Dan Decker will attempt his second shot now. And that one rims out as well. Zach Dumich will be subbing in. So, excuse me, looks like Dan Decker will be getting three shots at the line. He has missed his first two, so kind of a squatted opportunity. Not every day that you get an opportunity to get three foul shots. But Dan Decker will make it up for making the last shot. So, one-third of those foul shots accounts to a 47-38 to lead for Centenary. Kyle Malavesi with the ball gives it to Tim Bricks. Josh Case, oh, almost on about a three there. But Zach Dumich will get the ball. He'll drive in, gets the adjustment, but misses. Unfortunate for him. He had great opportunity to get a shot going in, but had the adjustment well set. It's just the rim. Just told him no thank you. So Kyle Malavesi up the court with it. And Josh Case gets it down low. He's in the paint. Had an opportunity. Draws the foul and gets it to sink in. So, and one opportunity for Josh Case. Centenary, an 11-point lead. Now, and they'll try to get it up to their game high of 12 points. Tim Fasima giving Kyle Malavese a nice hand slap there. Josh Case will be attempting the and one. Get the team up to 50 points. Does just that. 50 to 38 Centenary now. And a great job on Centenary's part. They had a sluggish offense uh, for most of the season, and they have a great opportunity to end their eight-game losing streak. Kyle Malavesi broke up that pass between Jordan Grieve and Dan Decker. So BBC will be inbounding the ball. Opportunity here for Baptist Bible to narrow Centenary's lead trying to get back into this game but a missed shot there by Jordan Grieve had a lot of bodies in his face couldn't really get a clean shot on but we got a foul called on Aaron Clark non-shooting foul that was against uh, Zach Dumich Aaron Clark was there for the foul for Baptist Bible and now taking a little breather Josh Case and Bowsager I'm sorry Bowsager will be coming into the game Josh Case is on the bench taking a breather Paul Jones So Paul Jones in for Josh Case. Bowsager gives it to Malavesi. Here's Paul Jones down low looking for somebody. He gets Malavesi. Dumich has a baseline. Lost control of the ball. Aaron Clark has the steal for Baptist Bible. So a holding call on Dumich as he was scrambling to get that ball back after mishandling the ball. It's Baptist Bible's ball. 50 to 38 centenary. Um... Very unbelievable that they're at this point in the game leading by as much as that. We've mentioned this before, Centenary has had somewhat of a sluggish season to start off. But obviously a new head coach, a lot of freshmen, students getting an opportunity to play. Sometimes uh, it's just a short time low before you can get the long time high. So hopefully that's what Centenary is uh, destined for under the Tim Fosina tutelage. So BBC just made a two to narrow the lead down to 10 for Centenary. And Bowser looking for somebody, gives it to Zach Dumich. Dumich looking for somebody, Malavesi ends up getting the ball. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Malavesi trying to set up a play here. Almost had a, had a pick from Tim Bricks, but he'll attempt the three, goes off. Dumich, does he have the rebound? Oh, tried to... Save the ball from going out of bounds. Stolen by Adam Brinkley. Coming back down. Abe Ballantyne kind of mishandled the ball. Has to reset. Had an opportunity to get a two there, but couldn't handle the ball well enough. And Aaron Clark almost fell and lost his footing while getting that pass. Abe Ballantyne getting the shot. 
Rebounded by... Foul called. Looks like a BBC foul right there. Malavasi took a hard hit right there, trying to get the ball from going out of bounds. So number 33, Dan Dodd of the defenders getting called for that foul. Pretty hard hit to the floor there, Malavasi took, but Malavasi looks to have shaken it off. And after that foul, Dan Dodd will be taking a breather on the bench. That was Baptist Bible's second team foul. Zach Dumic driving in, looking for somebody. Zach Dumic trying to get it down low. Blocked by A. Valentine, but went out of bounds. Centenary retains possession. So Dumich will be inbounding the ball with 24 seconds remaining on the shot clock. And Centenary playing at their level. Centenary really, I think most of their success in this game has to do with their playing at their own pace. Uh, a lot of times when they're down by a lot of points, or for anyone's case, any team, when you're down by as many points, you really have to compromise picking up the pace for yourself and taking some shots that you don't want to take, a little force action, and sometimes that's not good for anybody except the team that's winning. But Centenary has an opportunity here to play at their own pace. They're taking their time, really drawing the shot clock down, but Josh Case gets a three to fall, so you got to count for Centenary playing the shot clock and relying on their big three shooters, and they've been doing most of that throughout this game. The three, the three action has just been unbelievable on both sides of the court, especially in this second half. But a Valentine will be taking the two. Just missed the three right there. I believe his toes were on the three-point line, so the refs only counted it as a two. So Malavasi coming up the court. So. Josh Case almost faked out number 30 Adam Brinkley there. But he'll pass it to Paul Jones down low, but it's broken up. Taken by Ed Valentine. Has a three on one going on. Oh! And it looks like a foul called on Malavasi. So Malavasi again, the foul called, the non shooting foul. On Baptist Bible will be inbounding the ball. Ed Valentine with the inbounds pass. And taking the two right there off the pass. Jordan Grieve misses it, but another foul called. Who is it on? We got number 11, Aaron Clark of Baptist Bible getting called for that one. That is their team fourth foul. Centenary will be inbounding the ball. Oh, Zach Dumich will give it to Bowsager. Bowsager looking for somebody. And at this point, Centenary can really just play the shot clock. Or they can try to drain the shot clock. They've been doing a good job at staying outside the perimeter until about 15 seconds remains on the shot clock. Then they give it down low, just in the case right there. Paul Jones misses his shot, but stripped away as Josh Case tried to go up for the rebound shot. And Kyle Smith making his second half debut as Kyle Malavesi takes some time on the bench. Well-deserved break right there, if you ask me. Kyle Malavesi making some big shots. Plenty of defense. I uh, had that foul called a little while ago, but I wouldn't necessarily say that as his fault. But Kyle Smith comes in for him, a very solid freshman. Although he's 5'9", he makes a lot up for it with his shooting and his play. Paul Jones there with the shot, misses it. And Aaron Clark coming down for Baptist Bible. Oh, mishandle of the pass. Adam Brinkley tried to save it from going out of bounds, but too little, too late. Centenary will get the ball back and try to add on to their 11-point lead. Kyle Smith coming up the court with it from the inbounds pass by Bowsager. Kyle Smith coming up with it. Bowsager coming up the court. So Bowsinger looking for somebody. 
He'll find Josh Case. Josh Case thought about swinging it out to Kyle Smith, thought against it, and stripped away Bousiger by a Valentine. He'll drive down the court, draws the foul nonetheless. So Josh Case getting called for that holding foul. So that's a shooting foul. And it looks like Dan Decker will be coming in for the Baptist Bible, but a full timeout called by Mike Schell for the defenders. So plenty of action here in the second half. And I'm really taking a toll because I'm almost out of breath. My throat is killing me because so much action has been going on. Well, what else, what else can you ask for from D3 Sports, ladies and gentlemen? D3, and there's definitely a lot of threes coming down in this game. Let me tell you, if there wasn't a roof over this place, it would be raining right now. There's been so much threes. But here we go with the full timeout. 8.07 remaining in the game. 53-42 to 42 Centenary. And Centen uh, Centenary has been doing an unprecedented job. And this is probably the best play I've seen them play all year. And just like everything just fell into place today, Centenary... Very fortunate with everyone hitting their stride with the long-range shooting. The threes definitely have made a difference in this game, especially on both sides of the court. But uh, we can contribute those threes to Centenary's double-digit lead so far, 53-42 to 42 once again. So as we resume play, a Valentine will be taking his two foul, his two foul shots. And Dan Decker is waiting in the wings to be subbed in. So here we go, a Valentine coming in to shoot the first shot. His first shot, good to go, swish. I believe after the second shot, Dan Decker will be coming in. Valentine's second shot goes right in. Dan Decker will be making a substitution. So Abe Valentine going out with a bang with those two foul shots. 53 to 44, Centenary now has the nine point lead in part two, Valentine's two foul shots. So eight minutes even remaining. Kyle Smith, a spin move on Dan Decker, tries to dish it out to Josh Case, misses the shot, and Adam Brinkley getting it for Baptist Bible. So now Baptist Bible trying to catch up here. Uh, any basket here can help them, and there you go. Adam Brinkley with the and one opportunity. And doing that part, looks like Tim Bricks and Kyle Malavasi, the original two starters, will be subbing in. So Kyle Smith and Paul Jones will be taking a breather on the bench. And Baptist Bible has an opportunity to draw within one point. Uh, excuse me, not one point, six, uh, six points of this game. But he's going to attempt the extra point. There you go. That's what I meant. Now it's a six-point lead for Centenary. So Abe Valentine will be summoned back in for Dan McGuigan. And Baptist Bible playing some heavy man coverage here. And Zach Dumich has the ball. Playing the perimeter once again is Centenary. Everybody of all heights playing behind the perimeter right now, especially Bricks and Case. Malavesi looking to get inside, gets to Case. Case trying to find a shot, but he'll save himself from mishandling the ball and dish it out to Zach Dumich. So we got five seconds on the shot clock. I don't think Roker's aware of the shot, but he'll get the shot to go. Just beats the shot clock, 55 to 47 centenary. Now we approach the seven minute mark of the game. Dan Decker, the pass to Jordan Grieve and back to Brinkley. And now Abe Valentine trying to drive in, but he'll dish it out. An open opportunity for Grieve for the three. Misses the shot, but rebounded by his teammate. And Adam Brinkley, wow, had a lot of centenary bodies in there to prevent him from making the shot. It looked like the defenders were looking for a foul on that. The refs didn't see any. All three of those refs apparently said uh, it was clean. 
Now Lavesi giving it to Clayton Roker. Clayton Roker. Tim Bricks thought about a baseline three. I, uh, good thing he didn't. Josh Case with the baseline shot. Misses it. Zach Dumich trying to save the ball from going out of bounds. He does, but unfortunately it lands into Dan Decker's hands for BBC. And Aaron Clark trying to drive in, but he'll give it to Adam Brinkley. Adam Brinkley had an open opportunity for a three, but they're really playing a lot of pass ball here. But a Valentine will take the three. Four Baptist Bible gets the ball. So Centenary only up by five now, under six minutes remaining. And now Centenary really wants to drain that shot clock as low as they can get it. Josh Case, a nice dish by Tim Bricks to Josh Case, gets the two to fall. So Centenary extends their lead and holds off any threats of BBC trying to get back within reach of this game. And Jordan Grieve taking the shot, misses it. Centenary gets the rebound. And Clayton Roker will be coming up with it. And we'll be having two players substituting for the defenders. But a timeout called by Tim Fasina of Centenary. Full timeout. A full timeout by Centenary College. So once again, I'd like to give another shout out to Centenary College. Whether you're a high school student looking for a college that provides hands-on learning instead of lecture halls or a community college student hoping to finish your degree at a small private college that offers individual attention, Centenary College always treats you like a person and never a number. Centenary offers a strong career development center, amazing internships, NCAA D3 sports, and many leadership opportunities, all within a diverse, welcoming atmosphere on a beautiful campus. Or maybe you're a working adult looking to advance your career. Centenary offers convenient one night per week and online bachelor's and master's degree programs in Hackettstown, Edison, and Barsippany, New Jersey that can help you be promoted, earn a higher salary, and take on more interesting work. To learn more, visit centenarycollege.edu. Discover Centenary College, where your dream career can be just a degree away. And I must say, I'll give my own personal plug to Centenary College. This is my first year here at this beautiful campus. And uh, I transferred over from uh, Bergen Community College in Bergen County, New Jersey, uh, located in Paramus, New Jersey, in Bergen County. Uh, I spent two years there, finished up over the summer, and then made my way over here to Hackettstown to become a Cyclone. And I'm really honored to have this opportunity to bring play-by-play -play to you on behalf of Centenary College. And I think it's a great place to be. But back to the game, Bowsager will be inbounding the ball. Dumich appears to be wide open, and he'll get it. Dumich looking for somebody. Malavesi and Baptist Bible playing heavy, heavy man coverage. Not giving an inch to Centenary. Not at this point in the game. No tolerance policy for BBC. They need heavy defense, steady offense, and they're hoping that Centenary doesn't make a lot of shots here. Ball last touched by BBC. But they got to be aware that two seconds are on the shot clock. If I could, I yelled down to them, only two seconds. So it's got to be a quick release, whoever gets the pass here. And Tim Bricks will take the fadeaway, misses it, shot clock violation. So the clock will stop temporarily, 4.56 remaining in the game. Seven point lead for Centenary, 57 to 50 over the defenders of Baptist Bible College. Dan Decker will be coming up the court to try to get something going for the defenders and get them closer to tying this game. Attempting the three ball for Baptist Bible. Luke Peterson misses it into the hands of Tim Bricks for Centenary. He'll be coming up the court. Looks like Zach Dumich trying to find some action here. Malavesi gets the ball coming up the court. He'll pass it to Dumich. 20 seconds remains on the shot clock. And Dumich gets the ball right back, trying to drive in, lost control of the ball, saves it from going out of bounds. Clutch play there, Tim Bricks there with the pass to save it from going out of bounds. Bowsager driving in, a little strip there by Luke Peterson, last touch by Baptist Bible. And looks like BBC was surprised that they kept it on centenary side of the court. But now Paul Jones will be stepping out for Josh Case. And Passenger looking for somebody. Malavesi right there. Two seconds on the shot clock. Another shot clock violation. That's the second time in a row that not only has Centenary 
as their second straight shot clock violation. But they beat the shot clock with a shot, but the shot did not hit rim. So they called the violation nonetheless. And we got another substitution, Abe Valentine making his way back in for Aaron Clark. Looks like the defenders have their original starting five back on the court. And, uh, excuse me, Dan Dodd passing it to Dan Decker. Dan Decker will attempt a three, gets it to fall. So, making it interesting here. Timeout, a 30 second timeout called by Mike Schell for the defenders. Plenty of action here. I recommend you not turn away from this game. So now Mike Show, the 20 year head coach at Baptist Bible, trying to devise up a strategy here to keep Centenary from shooting. And uh, if you want to play good defense and basketball at any level, a good defense will only limit an offense to at most one shot. If you can keep an offense from just shooting one shot per possession, you have a good chance of winning that game. It's up to them to make those shots when they have the opportunity to. So we resume play. Bowsinger will be inbounding the ball. And playing heavy man coverage once again, Baptist Bible, full court man coverage. And they're not giving up an inch. But Dumitch will be inbounding it to Josh Case. And down low, Josh Case is able to draw the foul. Adam Brinkley for the defenders getting called on that. So they need these foul shots to fall more than ever. Josh Case makes the most of it. His first shot goes in. 3.42 remaining in this game. And his second shot goes right in. So 59 to 53 centenary now, 340 remaining in this game. There's gonna be some interesting basketball as we approach the final three and a half minutes and there's an opportunity for Baptist Bible. Dan Dodd misses an open shot, but it looked like he didn't have a good position to get a fair shot off. But nonetheless, centenary comes back on the court. And if I were centenary, I'd be smart enough and play the shot clock. I'd wait for about the last 10 seconds to get a shot off, if anything. We also want to make sure that you have an opportunity to. Josh Case getting the pass from Tim Brooks down low, but a foul called on Luke Peterson for Baptist Bible. So that's a non-shooting foul. But talking about fouls, Centenary has 17 fouls, and Baptist Bible has six. So we have a long ways to go before any fouls automatically go to the line for either team. So here we go, final three minutes. T minus 257. Josh Case, pass to Dumich, thought about a three, thought against it, but he'll dish it to Malavesi, airs the three, and it stays with Centenary. Unbelievable right there, Luke Peterson. Last touched it for the defenders, so. Centenary will retain possession here. They got 19 seconds remaining on the shot clock, so they do have time to set up a play here. And a risky pass right there. Thankfully, Tim Brooks was there to bring it down for the Cyclones. Dumich looking for somebody. Bowsinger. As Dumich. But Bowsinger will attempt a three in Dan Decker's face, but he'll miss it. And a rebound right there for the defenders. Adam Brinkley there. It's going right down to the end here. Baptist Bible is saying no to Centenary's please back down. And they're still taking their shots, getting their rebounds, but a charge called. An offensive foul called on number 33, Dan Dodd for the defenders. Great defense there, great heads up there for Centenary. I believe Tim Brooks was the one who drew the ch charge and call. So a timeout here. But And it looks like Mike Show will be calling a timeout here. Uh, we're not sure yet if what timeout Mike Show is calling here. 
but it seems to be a stoppage in play. It looked like an official's timeout, but Dan Dodd looks to be taking a seat on the bench. And it looks like Aaron Clark has made his way back in in place of Dan Dodd. So 219 remaining after that stoppage of play. So Right there, Zach Dumich with the inbounds pass Bowsinger, and then back to Dumich. Now they're going to pass back and forth to each other and see what happens here. And Centenary once again draining that shot clock, making sure that Baptist Bible has little to no time to do anything and threat a comeback opportunity. Down low, wide open. Down low was Zach Dumich, but Tim Bricks didn't see it, but now he gives it to Dumich. Dumich will drive in and no shot, but a foul called on Baptist Bible. Looks like Aaron Clark got called for that one. Or, I'm sorry. No, they're signaling a one-on-one. -on -one. So that's not Aaron Clark. But it looked to be number 30, Adam Brinkley. So, Zach Dumich will be going to the line for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And now here's a sub for the defenders. Jordan Grief subbing in for Aaron Clark. So, Zach Dumich really needs to make the first shot to really put BBC away. And here's the opportunity. Rims out, unfortunately. Bowsinger gets the rebound, though. So Centenary will drain some more time off that clock and try to extend their lead in the process. Kyle Malavese driving in, but Bowsinger will get the pass from him. And they're really playing off the perimeter right now. They're playing as far off of the perimeter than they can from being called for a backcourt. But, ooh, it looked like an up and down right there. But Josh Case, uh, he... he fell and the ball went out of bounds so BBC will begin the ball right back in a timeout Mike Show will call for the defenders 30 second timeout here Mike Show being conservative with his timeouts here they have one timeout left so I think they're going to save that one for full well, on the other side of the court Centenary has two timeouts left 18 fouls for Baptist Bible 7 for Centenary Minute 30, 90 seconds. Keep Centenary away from stopping their eight game losing streak. So, if you're a Cyclone fan, you're in for some luck tonight. If everything stays as planned, Centenary will be improving to three and 13 on the year. But unfortunately, this is not a conference game. And in the CSAC, conference games matter. And Centenary is 1-7 right now. I'm not sure what exactly places them in the CSAC for right now. But this could be a great opportunity to deliver some momentum for this team because they have been playing absolutely flawless basketball. But Baptist Bible has an opportunity to come back. Look like. Jordan Grieve with the three ball right there. One possession now separates these two teams. I shouldn't have spoke too soon. Now I'm going to get murdered for saying anything of that kind. Now that one possession separates these two teams. Josh Case has the ball for Centenary. And they really don't want to rush anything and give Baptist Bible an opportunity to tie this game. Tom Alavesi looking for something. Ten seconds remains on that shot clock. So if they miss this... But Tim Bricks trying to put them away. They won't. And wow, I believe a couple milliseconds separate these two teams. Well, separated the game clock from the shot clock. A three ball there by Dan Decker was missed. And a scramble for the rebound. And a pushing foul called on Jordan Grief for Baptist Bible. Gives Centenary the ball back. Looks like Tim Bricks will be getting a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. So they have the bonus, Centenary. 59 to 56. One shot can really help put Baptist Bible away for good. But it all comes down to Tim Bricks making this shot. A one-on-one -on -one opportunity. He wants to get both shots out of this, we hope. But he misses it. And Baptist Bible gets the ball right back. Mike Show 
will be smart enough to call a full timeout here if he has the opportunity to, but looks like he'll let his guys play. So here we go. This is the game right here. No shot clock. All Baptist Bible here. An opportunity. Dan Decker has the ball driving in. An opportunity here. Jordan Green for the three. Airs it out. And Dumich has the ball for three. But Dan Decker will get the intentional foul. Kyle Malavese, an opportunity here. That is Baptist Bible's 10th team foul. So he will be going to the line to shoot two. So Kyle Malavese will get two shots at the line here. This is really exciting basketball. So Mike Show will use his final timeout and will use it as a fault. So once again, I'd like to give a shout out to Baptist Bible. BBC has provided excellence in biblical higher education for 80 years. Located in Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, BBC offers nearly 40 undergraduate majors. More than 1,000 students are enrolled in undergraduate, graduate, and seminary programs, which each offered with each offered on campus and online. Our scenic 131 anchor campus, located in a suburban area near Scranton, now includes the brand new $5.6 million Recreation Athletic Center. This expansion of the Phelps Student Center includes an indoor track, climbing tower, three basketball courts, a cardio room, a weight room, and more. Our faculty and staff serve as teachers and mentors for life, with graduates serving as global Christian leaders in a range of careers. It's BBC goes beyond the ordinary. Learn more at www.bbc.edu. Coincidentally, I was not too far from Scranton uh, not too long ago. I was up at Marywood University covering the men's soccer here at Centenary College. They went up to Marywood to play, uh, they, yeah, they went to play Marywood in the conference championship. We ended up winning that match one to nothing. But uh, great uh, atmosphere up there by Scranton, Pennsylvania. So I expect Baptist Bible to be the same. But here we go, Mel Lavesi attempting his first shot. And that should put an end to the game. So four point lead Centenary offers up, so they might want to keep their hands off anyone attempting a three for Baptist Bible. But Malavese has a chance to put a nail in the coffin right here as Clayton Rooker looks to be coming in from the wings. And that should really end any possibility of Baptist Bible winning this game. So Josh Case will be taking some time on the bench the last 3.4 seconds of this game. So BBC really quick release right here if they are hoping for any opportunity. So inbounding the ball for Baptist Bible, Jordan Grieve. Looking for someone else to be a long distance pass. The Christian Leitner pass goes no good. And Kyle Malavese will steal it and play out the rest of the clock. So what an incredible game we have here at Centenary College. A 61-56 victory for the Cyclones over to the defenders of Baptist Bible College. So Centenary improves their record to 3-13. They still stay 1-7 in conference play, but hopefully we can see this game as a precursor for the remainder of the season. And Centenary fortunately ends their eight-game losing streak, and their next game will be two days from now against Cairn University right here at the John M. Reeves Student Recreation Center. That will be at 7 p.m. Cairn is a conference game, so we're really looking forward to that. So, on behalf of everybody here at Centenary College, this is a great game for men's basketball, and I'm your play-by-play -play man, Dan Grimm, signing off for you guys one more time. Our final score here, Centenary 61, Baptist Bible 56, and we'd like to thank you for listening to our coverage. So, once again, Dan Graham for Centenary College, signing off, and hopefully we'll see you two nights from now against Cairn University.